Um, and then the Speed Chess Championships going on. <clears throat> Let me make sure. Yeah, I'm it's Wesley this. against Abdu Satarov. Should be a blowout. So you guys can stop watching that and come over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. We, we, we have to stream when we can stream. I generally mm -hmm. don't like to stream when there's a big tournament going on because then we're fighting for viewers. Right. But it's either not stream today or stream now. So. Right. <laughs> because uh, we didn't want to clash with Grandmaster Feingold. That's right. He streams at 5 today. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking that uh, he and I should do some commentary like on t uh, tournaments, but uh, the problem is there's always so much commentary on the tournaments already. Yeah, yeah, no, but Ben's is always was always really pop um, popular. That's true. And that's true. I told him that before that I felt like you guys mm -hmm. would make a good commentary team, and I told you definitely. that too. Um, so yeah, that would be good to do and get him fine up. gold and fine gold. Get him up and moving. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, I think you guys are good. Would be good together. Certainly. And that could be like support staff. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. <laughs> Banning and you know whatever. <laughs> yes. And the whatever's tweeting or something. <laughs> <laughs> something. But um, I know that you're right. There are a lot of people commentating, but Vince is usually pretty popular. Yeah, chess.com, it was Wrench and Maurice Ashley. Yeah. And then Chess24 was uh, Gustafsson and Kazim Janov. So who do you think I was watching? What are you talking about today? Yeah. Wait, who's the first? Wrench and Ashley. Yeah. Or or Kazim Janov and Gustafsson. Gustafsson. Yes, yeah, yes. Kazim. <laughs> yes, I, I chose the guy who played for the world championship. <laughs> hey, kangaroo. Who would have thought? Hey, fifth nail. Yeah, we are pretty early today, kangaroo. Fluorescent potato, etc. Yeah, well, I have to do something later, and then Ben streams at 5 Eastern time, and so because of those two things, this was really the only time we could do it and not interfere with Ben's mm -hmm. stream. Hey, Thaddeus, Team's James Laws. <laughs> <laughs> Streaming, right, I know. I was, just I was just talking about that. Yeah, I, I, that's funny. Yeah, typical Ben ruining everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know. I hate it that we're having to stream while the speed chess championships going on. But there was just no other choice. You know, but it was either not stream <clears throat> or conflict. Right. So here we are. Plus, so is going to just crush him anyway. Come on. <laughs> yeah. True. A little early <laughs> to roast, but I'm good. <laughs> oh, yes. the chat over there is bad? I wouldn't know about the chess.com chat. Yeah, what's wrong with the chat over there? You know who was in the chess24 chat? Yasser. Yasser was talking in the chat. Oh, was he? Yeah. yeah he likes to get around in the chat. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so playing, I know, how dare they play while we, we're streaming here. <laughs> Yes, their chat is bad, and they should feel bad. <laughs> well, I was briefly a mod on the chess.com stream, but then they unmodded me. Not because I did anything wrong. Thanks, Stephen. I was just a temporary <laughs> mod anyway. We're all excited about that, indubitably. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Stephen. Why don't you guys uh, challenge Karen to some chess on mm, chess.com? Definitely. We can start off with a couple games like usual. Yeah. All right. And then we've decided to continue, as the stream title might suggest, with the nun rather than the Panchenko. Chess that out a little bit further. I think it's mm -hmm. a little bit easier for me to follow. So that's, and Spencer likes both books, so we're good there. Now, if you were a mod on there, oh man, yeah, I know you would have a field day kangaroo. All right. <laughs> oh, there's a noise. There so it is. Am, I, am I just playing? I guess because it's three minute. Okay, okay. Let's see if I cannot flag. How's it going, Lords of Acid? I wonder, is the name Lords of Acid from any particular thing? Right. Or do you just like, did you like the drug acid? Right. Or is it some <laughs> kind of cleaning acid? Like, what's up with the acid? Yeah, or maybe it's like you like apples. <laughs> citric, citric acid. acid. Right. <laughs> There's got to be something going on. 
Mm. I haven't seen the vampire gambit. Muha ha 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 ha. Just hand, no brain. That's true. <laughs> what do you mean, R.I.P. Alex Trebek? Is that for real? What did he pass away? I heard that he had beat uh, he had beat his cancer, or mm. at least it, maybe he was doing better with it. Dang. Did he, he had pancreatic cancer? I think. I don't remember actually. Yeah. Mhm. Dang, that is sad, Alex Trebek. <clears throat> Oh, I forgot about Dre. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to hear he passed. Yeah, I remember I was watching the game show Network, and it was like, I think the show is called Double Dare, or mm-hmm. something like that. Or Double, something about Double. <laughs> I don't really, really remember. Yeah. And anyways, the host was Trebek. And I was like, it was a young Trebek. Oh, really? Like from the 70s. I was like, what? Mm. Is that Alex Trebek? You, like, could hardly tell. But then when he was talking, he had Trebek's syntax. So I was like, oh, it's got to be Trebek. <laughs> and it was. It was indeed Trebek. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that he did anything before Jeopardy. I didn't either. I feel like Trebek would always unintentionally roast the people on Jeopardy. Like, he would often say something, and it would be, like, kind of a roast, but it was very mild. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very um, elitist um, way of speaking. Yes, But yes. it was funny. It, prov- it was funny. Provided comedy. I agree with totally, that assessment. Totally, totally. Totally. Mm. Oh, man, I almost... Uh, had a heart attack there. Yeah. Not really, you know. I almost laughed and laughed. <laughs> what, because you thought I wasn't going to see that? Yeah, you almost saw it. I saw pond, it, no. But you did almost. It was, it was brainstorming. I, I saw understand. the pond. I'm proud I that you saw me. Saw me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I was just afraid that you might not see it. It's me. possible. <laughs> it is it's definitely possible with me, no doubt about it. But you're playing great this game. Mm hmm. You're crushing it, but you definitely got to speed it up. That's the only caveat. Okay. Otherwise, it's an easy win. <clears throat> I can't mark it, Sans. It's too entertaining. Hey, Ovi. How's it going? I met Ovi for the first time just a couple days ago. <clears throat> mm-hmm. He's a pretty cool dude. Wow, now Karen's pulling tactics? Jeez. That's when you know we're in a world of hurt. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you know, Ovi loves chess. Did you know that? Did I know Ovi loves chess? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he just can't stop playing chess, that guy. Well, I met Ovi at a chess tournament. I believe it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Come on, you could you could have pre-moved that. <laughs> Just saying. <clears throat> How come you're playing so great? What's going on here? Mm-hmm. Every move's best. I can't even understand it. I have very little time left. That's true. Just keep playing all the best moves like you're doing. (laughs) That'll do it. Let's see. It's anyone's game now. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> damn it. Dang. I hate life. Oh, man. You're playing a great game, too. Uh, life is horrible. Somebody just take me, <laughs> take me out right <laughs> now. <laughs> Good game. 
Oh, I hate everybody. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> Except for I love you. <laughs> Except for I love you. <laughs> Except for Thaddeus. <laughs> oh, that was a good game. You played it really well. I know, but the time darn. got you. GG, Thaddeus. Sorry, I cursed. <laughs> so it's a Dutch. You always do this knight d2 c4. Just play knight c3. Come on. Well, before I move my pawn? No, c4, knight c3. Oh, yeah. Instead, you always play knight d2 c4. Mm -hmm. like I know that. I do. I might quit it. But it's okay. I mean, at least you did all this good stuff here. Mm -hmm. That was great. How did you find such a good plan so quickly? I don't know. I felt like I was in a zone. I yeah, hate everybody. You were in the zone. Auto zone. <laughs> then this is a bad move because now he has to take with the queen. Especially myself. <laughs> That's best. Now here you could win material because this is hanging. Mm -hmm. So you just take it. Uh -huh. Or you could like take this first and then take that. Also, you could just take this all the time. Like even here you could take this because if he takes your bishop, that's a big fork. Mm, oh yeah. That is a big forker. Big forky. And then he he kept hanging his pieces, so he finally took it. And this was all best. <laughs> best. Great. Here. Best, best, best. Crushing it. Best move there. Then I was really low on time. Big surprise. Right. Now, you could do that. Yeah, yeah. And then like go go here here pre move all that right <clears throat> pre move all that you no, might I win that way. I just messed it up. I didn't have enough time. You can also win by just getting your rook in. I mean, you had like twenty seconds here. I know. I just so it's it's not a lot of time. But yeah. if you got your rook in, you could have won. I know. You know, but it's hard to figure that out with the time <clears throat> pressure creeping in. But those yeah, are the two thinking, things that I would have yeah. done. I would either traded queens or just brought my rook in, and made it quickly. Okay. Yeah. The game was easier to predict than the election. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, what about the guy who was like, I lost a game against a blindfold guy. Like, should I quit chess? <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> Got him. Yeah, you guys are nice. Oh, kangaroo's wait, ready for nice. a pounding here. Ready to bang it out. All right. All right, I'm back to... Zen mode. <laughs> I'm still mad about that. Um, all right, here we go. <clears throat> I'll predict a London. Yes, I knew it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can play something else. Uh, Karen has never it. owned another chess <clears throat> club other than this one. True. Renaissance ombre. Mm-hmm. That is all true. <clears throat> Karen was ready to stop the vote when she was winning. <laughs> That's funny. That's too funny. But then when she was losing, she's like, recount. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get past it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Trump. Well, maybe he's not trying to get past it. <laughs> not really. He seems still very invested. <clears throat> I mean, it's like I've said. He's going to act ugly on his way out. How's it going, Pam? Yeah, I mean, maybe he, uh, after that game, you should hold a press conference in front of four, the Four Seasons Landscaping. That would be the best way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, is that not crazy or That's what? Like the, it's one of the weirdest things yet. I mean, it's bizarre. Of all the weird things, that was one of the weirdest. Uh... That's almost as weird as spray tanning every day of your life. Getting spray tanned. <laughs> <laughs> that's almost that weird not quite but you know almost yeah 
I mean, I'm not sure about the spray tan. I mean, but it, I guess it's spray tan. Well, whatever. Tanning normally. Yeah, yeah whatever he's doing <laughs> yes. abnormally. Spencer, have you ever had your IQ tested? Actually, we talked about this yesterday. I have not had my IQ tested. How long are the political talks going to last? Probably forever for the rest of your life, right? Uh, that was illegal, Jack, but I think I know what you meant, and that might have been playable, yes, at some point, depending on when you meant it. I do hate it when people bring politics into my politics. Yeah, how come Karen's playing so aggressively, too? Maybe she's possessed. I thought it was a skin disease he had. <laughs> no. <laughs> no way. Kangaroo's begging for mercy in the chat here. <laughs> You're doing great. Still maybe, uh, you know, speed it up a bit. <laughs> Just a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say that, uh, you know, orange is a pretty cool color, though. It's not cool in the sense, like, green and blue and purple are cool colors. I just mean cool like good. So I don't blame him for making himself orange every day. Every every single day. Really? Well, no, I'm joking, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I'm joking. And my favorite color is green. I'm not going to paint myself <laughs> green every day. <laughs> well, I wasn't really listening. I was kind of half listening. I heard some colors. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't even color my hair green all the time. <laughs> Just very rarely. I feel like this Panchenko book really helped you play this attack nicely. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm. I'm not sure what you do now. Karen is too aggressive. I'm getting nervous, says Lord of, Lords of Acid. I mean, I have almost no time left. Yes. That is correct. But you're playing too good, <laughs> I guess. God damn. Nice. Really nice play there. Yeah. Yes, you, did, you had a really on. cool tactic earlier, <laughs> a little earlier here. GG Kangaroo. That was a great attack, though. <laughs> Yeah, you had to work off seven at some point. It was here. This. <clears throat> I was looking at that. Threatening mate, and this is mate. It's mate. Oh, darn. I did not see mates very well. <clears throat> yeah, rook off seven is killer. <clears throat> what a move. I was looking at getting my rook But then there. kangaroo would have just, uh, <clears throat> you know, reported you for cheating. So it's good you didn't play it. <laughs> All right, let's see. I did sack a piece. I don't usually do yeah. that unless I feel no, that was good. confident. I've done, I've sacked an over the board, but it's rare. So usually in the London, you play e ticks when they take. But c ticks is okay because your knight is here. Mm. And you can play knight c3. But you didn't play knight c3. You have an aversion to knight c3? Is that true? I must. Because <laughs> I would definitely I mean, the play it here. The, the evidence is clear cut, but yes. I, I never realized that I did have an aversion. <laughs> hey, it's GM Benjamin Feingold. I have to overcome that somehow. Thank you, GM Benjamin Feingold. Yeah. But basically, you should always play 9c3 if you can. I almost never do. I wonder why I don't. The only times that you can't are when your pawn is here. Or if your pawn's on c2. 
Obviously, you don't want to play knight c3 blocking your pawn. Mm -hmm. And you can't play knight c3 if their pawn's there. But otherwise, you should always play knight c3. If, they, if you play c4 or don't have a c pawn, knight c3. Okay. Like, knight c3 strictly <clears throat> better than knight d2. It's just so your knight if... is usually on d2 because you have to play pawn to c3, like this, which is right. Right, okay. But if I don't have to play that and I happen to go knight b to d2, then you're telling me that probably then my pawn is going to end up on should be c4 after, if I, or, or still has to be c3. Right. If, if you're playing with c4, you don't want your knight on d2. Okay. Or if you're playing c takes d4, you don't want your knight on d2. It's preferable to be on c3. And there might be reasons you play knight d2 and then later c4, but, but in if, general, I'd but if like I go knight... my knight on c3. Okay, so if I go knight d2, though, like, um, and then I move my c-pawn? Well, maybe. You know, you're, like, we can discuss, like, for example, <clears throat> let's say he played the main line, right? Mm -hmm. Like this, right? I mean, a, a big idea for white is to play e4. Like, takes queen e2, e4 castles oh well, takes i guess last so for example castles queen e2 then takes an e4 mm -hmm. that's like a common plan to try to break with e4 i mean i don't know i i would be a little bit hesitant to play c4 generally i would think e4 seems like the normal break to me okay I if, see. if you want to get a break like that going mm -hmm. break them off a piece of that kick cat bot <clears throat> also when you play knight d2 if they take don't take with the c pawn you can't play knight c3 anymore. Take with the e pawn. You know, the, the pawn is actually pretty smart here to stop the knight. Okay. Oh, yeah, we heard about Alex Trebek. Kangaroo told us. <clears throat> yeah, we heard about that. I guess the reason... So... Um... Trying to think why I would um, mm -hmm. take that way and not the other way. Right. Well, I mean, the only reason to take <clears throat> this way is to play knight c3, really. Okay. So if, if you already if you can't play knight c3, you should generally play e takes. And there are mm -hmm. some, you know, there are some little positional points. Like, you know, f4 is weaker when you play e takes, and b4 is weaker when you play c takes. So you got to sort of assess that depending on when they play c takes. Which if, which matters more, because mm -hmm. you know which pawn you're going to get rid of to control that square. But usually it's e takes. But c takes here is fine because, like I said, you don't you didn't play knight d two yet, so now you could play with knight c three. But even still, this is just equal. I, I would prefer white because the bishop's bad, and c takes is bad. Kangaroo, don't play c takes. That looks fine. He gave up. No, oh, no, no. He, Okay, you gave back the bishop pair. Now somebody in chat was complaining that your pawn is weak. Mm -hmm, I knew that, but... Perhaps because of this. <clears throat> but okay, you can sack a pawn. <laughs> I would. Wait, what do you mean sack a pawn? Well, here attacks two pawns, so uh, how are you going to defend them both? Oh, 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 I didn't see that. So I would play <clears throat> queen f3, takes, castles. Oh no, that hangs the knight. So maybe queen e2. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, people in chat like Jack wanted bishop takes h7, but you're going to probably need your knight on f3 first for that. All right, I don't know, b4 looks okay. Probably wouldn't do that, but whatevs. So here he's uh, trying to break you up, but I mean, it's a very risky move. <laughs> it's a very risky move because, you know, your rook is here, your queen is here, your I mean, your bishop's here and your queen is here, mm -hmm. all ready to exploit g5. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if black wasn't castled, g5 is a good positional move, but... I mean, what's even... You know, this is pretty risky. Takes is great. Even here, this looks totally winning, right? I mean, to me, this just... I didn't calculate this, but I saw it during the game. It's, <laughs> I think you're going to win this. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, mate, etc. So rook f7 was always a strong <clears> move. <throat> this was good too, though. I think you're still winning. Great idea. Even still, like, rook, you know, rook f7 always wins, basically. Especially here, it's the coolest here, because you don't even take the pawn. You just put the rook there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But then this was too strong. Check and G6. I didn't even see that coming. Now he can't stop mate and one. You've got mate and one here, mate and one there. And if he takes, knight takes his mate and one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like old McDonald with all these mate and ones. <clears throat> Good game. Mm -hmm. GG. Hey, hey, L. Cohen. Betty White experiences the quickening. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't understand. I guess because Betty White is still alive. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, so you want to get on that book? Yeah, we're going to get going today because I have to um, get out of here at a certain time. So probably won't do a, a full two-hour stream. Karen versus Magnus next. <laughs> All right, seriously. Magnus is like, oh, no, I don't want to get attacked like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Let's read this little stanza here. Rook versus two minor pieces. Two minor pieces are generally worth more than a rook in all phases of the game. In the middle game, two minor pieces are worth more than a rook and a pawn in a great majority of cases. Whereas in the end game, they are more or less balanced. In, mo in, any, in almost any situation, the two bishops are worth more than other minor piece combinations. The key difference between the middle game and the end game is that the attacking chances provided by the two minor pieces are only relevant in the middle game and are especially valuable when queens are still on the board. Moreover, as the game progresses, files tend to be opened, which enhances the power of the rooks. So basically, you know, if you have a rook, you want to be in the end game, right? And two bishops are good, <laughs> is another thing he said. So now we can look at this example here. <coughs> This is the game Cheparinov against Paco Vallejo. Moreover. <laughs> Here two four. Am I right? Yeah. Two bishops vat els. Yeah, maybe though we can get some commentary going sometime. I would love that. <clears throat> yeah. I like commentary. I like doing it, commentary, and I like listening to it. Mm -hmm. The commentary teams. Let's see. This looks right. Do do do. Tra la la. All right. It's white to play. All right. And what is this the theme again? The two minor pieces against rook. Correct. Okay. I see now, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I never saw Highlander. Me neither. But I know there can be only one. <laughs> Is that That's from Highlander, right? Betty White's older than the Queen of England. Does that mean she can be the Queen of England now? Oh, maybe I should add the names, right? Oh, yeah. I forgot okay. about that. Mm -hmm. Pardon moi. Chep R E Nov against Paco Vallejo. There it is. This is from 2008 Olympiad. All right, well, maybe we should, uh, I'll read what he has to say and we can look at it, huh? I'm sure. Black has two minor pieces for a rook, but his development is poor and his king is somewhat exposed to attack. However, by activating his pieces, even at the cost of a pawn or two, black is able to gain the advantage. F5. So Cheparinov's trying to open it up for his mm -hmm. rooks. Very logical. And you want to open it up when the guy's pieces are all in the back row, right? Mm -hmm. B6. Both freeing the C8 bishop and allowing the F8 bishop to be developed to c5. Oh, F8. Yeah. If bishop takes check and rook takes, queen a3 is very good for black. Well, it is threatening the fork, right? Mm -hmm. The big fork. <clears throat> Although, I don't know, I feel like even trading queens, white would have some chances there. 
But you still have to deal with the threat of the fork, so I can't like do this after. I can't trade queens and play fe because you'll check me with my rook. So I'd have to play some passive move, and then even this is hanging, maybe. But maybe you can take and play rook b5 to put pressure here. No, then you get skewered like this. Dang, two bishops are tough. Two bishops are tough. Mm -hmm. And if rook b8, check king c7. <clears throat> so yeah, this is not very easy for white, even with the queens off the board. Like he just said, you know, with the rooks, you prefer queens off the board. But even there, the bishops are just so strong. So he plays fe. Fe. Queen e3. And queen c6. <clears throat> Bishop c5, exclam. The materialistic knight c5 would leave black under pressure after rook f7. The move played, which is bishop c5, uh, prepares to surrender the kingside pawns for the sake of peace activity. He still played rook a7, f7, rather. And then he's just going to lose his kingside pawns. But at least he got out his bishop and he's going to get out his rook, too. Mm -hmm. Is the point. B takes... Check. King c8. And rook d8. Black's bishop and knight are worth six points on the standard material scale. The same as white's rook and... Probably pawn, right? Pawn! <laughs> but black has a large advantage. White's initiative has disappeared. And in fact, it is now black who has attacking chances. While white suffers from his many weak pawns. Like that. And that, and that. So yeah, let's see, it's four pawns, yeah, for five. So he's trying to increase the material advantage by taking. Question mark. H3 is better, though C4 followed by D4 is excellent for black. So he took instead. Question mark. D4 question mark. Missing an immediate win with queen a4 exclam. When it's white's king, that's fatally exposed. So the threat is this, right? Forking. So, for example, rook f2. Queen d4, followed by queen d1. Because if I play queen d1 check, you can't block with your rook. You'll lose on f1 to mate. Or, rook cf3, getting out of the fork this way, check. Now, you can't just move your king away, because I'll still... I mean, either way, I'm checking you, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to lose on f1 <clears throat> to the bishop. For example, rook f2, queen d1. So, queen a4 it actually forces a win, tactically. This is the idea, and the back rank is weak, and the rook is loose. Uh, I'll take a Coke. Okay. Yeah, thank you. In the can. <laughs> yeah, bishop on a6 is very strong. One bishop Vatels. <laughs> so d4 question mark. That didn't win immediately. But still, black's pawns are a major asset. They're going to go to Queenton. White's now in full retreat. Retreat. Threatening a discovered check, I guess. And the pawn. Again, this is actually adhering to my principle where you, when you have less rooks, you, you trade the rook. Or you have more rooks, you trade the rooks. You only have, you have the only rook. We talked about that yesterday. Mm -hmm. But here it's, it's actually losing, I suppose. Check. King c7. Poke. Threatening mate. And e5. White to play here. A typical situation in which the minor pieces overwhelm the rook. White has no active play and can only wait while black improves his position. Note how the threats against white's king severely limit his mobility. Indeed, moving the queen and rook away, you'll get mated here or on the back row. I mean, this bishop is still a monster. 
and obviously the past pawn is going to be difficult mm -hmm. to deal with as well. Yeah, the center pawns. Yes. Fight here, so now you can't take because it's mate and it's not check. Yeah, <laughs> Retweet. <laughs> Knight e6, threatening an immediate win with e2 takes knight f4, forking the queen and forking g2. Mm -hmm. So rook b1 getting out of that fork. Queen g4. And he had a good enough technique to clean this up, actually. See, again, we can't run around with our queen because it's mate, so he just has to go back. Sad. <laughs> But now the pawns are just too much. This is really mean right here, King E3, stopping this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who needs the pawn? Right? <laughs> yeah, crushed him there at the end. Good game. Yeah, nice game by Paco there. He beat Chaparino off pretty bad. Definitely some key moments where obviously B6 is a good move. But then this Bishop C5... He knew that the guy would take all of his king side pawns, but that would still be good for him because he's getting so active. All right, you can't play so passively. You got to get your pieces out, especially in this material balance. You need active pieces. Mm -hmm. And so he <laughs> did lose all of his pawns, but he's doing great here. And in fact, he even had an immediate win with queen a4. But the fact of the matter is black's winning with normal moves too. Mm -hmm. So he just played the position and won. Hey, human, that much. Yeah. Yes. Peace activity is king. All right, let's look at another one, huh? Definitely. Yeah, I like, the, I like this book. I think it's growing on me. Definitely. I like those small little sections. Mm. Oh, thanks for 100 bits, Market Sands. Yay, thank you, Market Sands. This is what you would call a good old fashioned butt whooping. Yes. Are you talking about the previous example, oh, okay. right? I didn't know when he was whooping his butt. Yeah, or maybe he meant the so. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> so much that's so possible. Game. Yeah, match. Oh yeah, I mean that was like the, that's the most one sided match, <laughs> like in theory. Although obviously Magnus might might prove me wrong there, but I would have thought that the Abdus Sitarov, he would do worse than Magsudalu. Mm. No offense to Abdus Sutarov or anything. You know, I'm just calling it like I sees it. <laughs> Have you ever seen Don't Mess with the Zohan, says Jack Ma Dib? Uh, what is it? An, it's an Adam Sandler movie, right? Says you could have been an extra. <laughs> wow. Don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen, seen it. It's, defini it's definitely Sandler. Mm. The Sandman. All right, so here we go. It's black to play. Oh, because of the hair. This is Bull again against Caruana. Yay. Go America. America. I like when people in other in other chats they're like they're like, Oh, this these people don't seem very American. That's what they're saying. And Caruana, that's Italian. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. They don't understand what America is. <laughs> they really don't. they would all all the people would have to be like Native American, like Cherokee and stuff. For them I to mean, be satisfied? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way, right? I think what the implication is, that in their mind, they're wanting them to have grown up here, which he did. Which he totally did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and also, he was born here. Yeah. So it's like, what? Mm -hmm. Cherokee is a great song. Right, they just want white people. Yes. They're hey, like, what are all these Asian Tiao. people doing? It's called a melting pot. Learn about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is Bull again against Caruana mm -hmm. from 2009. Hey, this thing is, uh, it's you know, flashing. Okay, it probably lasts a little bit longer. Okay, okay. But we can get it in second. I thought maybe it was going to explode. <laughs> no, no. But I've got <laughs> the cord here we can bar too. It's white, it's black to move. Uh, yes, black it's to black move. to move. And what's their name of our section? 
It's still the same one. Oh, it's still the same section. Two pieces for a rug. You I can did. tell also on the you know board. That would, would have been a hint. Mm -hmm, that's true. All right. Once again, two minor pieces face a rook and a pawn. But this case is very different. First of all, white has the two knights, which is the worst pair of minor pieces in a position like this, which is open and does not provide support points for the knight. Secondly, the position is tailor-made for black's rooks, with both the e-file and especially the open d-file offering attractive posts. Thirdly, white's attacking chances are non-existent. These factors more than balance the advantage conferred by the two minor pieces in the middle game, and the position is slightly better for black. However, white is far from lost. A crucial factor is whether his bishop can develop any activity. <clears throat> All right, yes, black to play. He goes for c4, doesn't want this bishop to uh, develop any activity, as none said. Yes, explosive position, right, mg weirdo. Bishop a2, rook a d8, rook e1, and here Caruana makes a slight inaccuracy, rook f e8, according to none. This slight inaccuracy gives white the chance to develop more actively than was really necessary. Rook d3, bishop b1, rook f d8, and then rook 3 d7 retains an edge. Okay. I mean, I like black there, but why isn't this so good, right? e4 dubious. <clears throat> white slips up in return. He intends to activate his bishop by playing b3, but he can't do this at once since b3 would lose to c3, followed by bishop takes f3, deflecting the knight away, so he can take f3. Therefore, white first blocks off the b7 bishop with e4, then b3. Uh, but this plan fails tactically. White should give up on that idea and instead play bishop b1. Got to turn the page here. All right, then he's got a couple variations here for us. So he's threatening check, which is, I guess, a little annoying, right? We might have to run around a bit. Mm -hmm. So we could try g6. Not exactly mate there, but, you know. e4. e5. Or, after bishop b1, rook d3 b3, bishop f3, knight takes, rook b3, check, king f8, knight d4, rook b2, bishop e4, exclam. Both these variations provide white with enough activity to maintain the balance. Indeed, white looks pretty active here, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And the king could also be in some trouble. Like, the, it's stopping you, for example, from moving your rook behind your past pawns, because then I can win your rook. Mm -hmm. What's so bad about e4? Well, well, we'll see. We'll see what's so bad about e4. He said it fails tactically. So you can't say, uh, <clears throat> you know, you can't say there's just one thing wrong with it. You have to look at the variation, right? So let's take a look. e4, as was played. Rook d3 b3, the logical follow-up to white's previous move, but even still bishop b1 is better. But he's not going to play e4, then bishop b1. You know, he blocked his own bishop then. I guess later he could play e5. But yeah. So he plays, uh, he plays b3. Rook e d8. And knight f1. Um, b takes c4 is not better. Because black has a very strong attack after rook c3, queen b2, rook takes f3, attacking the queen and protecting his queen, e5, keeping the variation going here, otherwise he just lost the knight for nothing, right? Queen g5, takes, takes. So already black won back material in this variation, and he's also threatening rook d2, which would be totally crushing attacking everything. 
How's it going, jo- Joa? <clears throat> hey, Joa. Joa. <laughs> Joao, FTP0. Joao, Joao. <laughs> so, BC is getting crushed with the attack there. Although, I wanted to actually look at this position for a second. Because is this the only move? What about, uh, you know, maybe here, for example? Like, why is that so bad? Mm-hmm. Because now if you take here, there's no my queen's not hanging, right? Right. So if you take here, I'll just take back. Easy enough. Simple enough. Hmm. Oh. You know, there you can I'm looking at taking every all the knights, but they're not really doing it for me. You know, they're not really Oh, it is doing it for me. It is doing it for me. Here and then there. Frankly, obviously. Winning material. So that's why queen b2. To protect the knight and avoid that tactic. If rook takes, just queen takes. Mm -hmm. I see. And so even Nun is, le is leaving some things up for interpretation, huh? I thought he'd mm -hmm. walk me through it a little easier than that. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you just got the notification? That's weird. That's weird. Yeah, we've been streaming for almost an hour. Yeah. Well, not really almost, but pretty close. I wonder if there's a way to do it where I just send out my own notification. Or manual. Probably still wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, <it> twitches. Yeah. <laughs> so this is actually why he played, well, maybe this is the reason why he played knight f1 first. So now here he doesn't have to play queen b2, and he did play queen b1. So now we're understanding the position and the, the player's thought process. Yeah. That's nice. Here. Boom shakalaka. This refutes White's plan, since his poorly coordinated and offsides pieces are unable to cope with Black's threats. Threatening queen g5 check and rook f2 with big mate coming up. The big mate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> rook e2, trying to defend laterally. Brooke takes h3 question mark. Fabi fumbles it a bit there. Queen g5 check x clam is correct. After rook g2, we can also, by the way, look at king h2, bishop c8, rook g2. Just a moment. Just a moment. Queen f4 check. Wins for black. Well, obviously moving the king back is not advisable, but what about blocking with the knight? We could consider it, right? <clears throat> it wouldn't be inconsiderate to consider it. I mean, this move looks pretty good, though. That move looks pretty good, because you can't possibly defend this. Right. Even blocking the bishop doesn't work because you unleash my rook. Now you're gonna get tore up from the floor up here. Mm -hmm. That's just mate. I thought actually you could escape and I could keep doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I'll take mate. So yeah, I think it's queen h4, it's, it's winning. So instead of king h2, we could try rook g2 after queen g5 check, queen c5 check, bishop c8 threatening h3. Uh, after rook c2, queen f2. After rook c2. There is no rook c2. He meant rook f2, I guess. Right? I don't know. You, you, you can't trick me that bad, you know? You can't trick me Thanks. that bad. I mean, rook e2, <clears throat> he probably meant. Did you get the... F the I almost said fork. Thank you. <laughs> no, no. I have actually no idea what you mean. Anyways, queen g5 check, rook g2... Queen c5 check. He says we're far away from it now. So oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. My B. Yeah, it's tough with the. With, there's like some delay, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Bishop. It was Archer, yes. Knight g3. That was him. Bishop mm -hmm. takes h3, x clam. So king takes this as mate because it's a pin. Rook g1. Bishop g4. <clears throat> threatening rook f2 check. Rook f2, rook g2, bishop f3. And if rook takes, queen takes check, is going to be mate. K 
king h3, queen g2, king h4, queen h2 mate. I could put that on the board. For example, let's say he just lets me do it, right? And then here. Now this, I guess, would be a logical move, but it allows mate. Because <clears throat> the pawn covers it. Oh, yeah. Also, even if it didn't, I'd take this with check and mate you soon. <laughs> So actually, in, so here he suggests rook g2 preemptively to stop rook f2. But after h5 followed by h4, why, black has a decisive attack. I mean, h4 is pretty strong because if you move the knight, rook h3 is mate. And also you can't stop h4. Yeah, you can't really stop h4. So, womp womp. Mm -hmm. All right, so queen g5 check wins by force and all those variations. But he played rook takes h3, which also looks pretty good. Queen e1 dubious. Queen b2 is the suggestion from none to defend on the second rank and try to trade queens, which I don't think he'll allow that. Queen e1, no variation there, just queen e1. b takes c question mark. At least every move's a mistake. Uh, b4, x-clam, trying to block the bishop, I suppose. Bishop b1, rook f3, knight g3, g6. Again, h4, h5 is the idea. It gives black <clears> pressure <throat> against white. But he played bc. He should just take back, but he actually played bishop b1. So he was probably afraid of the fork, right? This is what both players were, were looking at. The fork, the big fork. But I guess king here attacks the rook even. I don't really think they both missed that, right? It seems like that's easy for them. But the, I don't know, the time pressure situation might have been pretty serious because they're like on move 36 and 37 now. Mm-hmm. So they could have only had seconds left. And then you could you can miss stuff like that easily, even if you're super GM. Taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. C3. Now black, again, has a definite advantage. Rook G3. I mean, rook E3, obviously. I don't think it is a blitz game, but they are in time pressure. Also, this position is extremely complicated. Check, knight g3, double question mark, blundering the game. King f2 keeps white in the game. Now here again, this idea of h5, h4 is pretty strong, as usual. Attacking the rook. Take this, but here it is. And then after hg, he just resigned. Yeah, I mean, both players got some question marks this game, but it was very complicated. Um, you can't take the bishop because you're going to get mated. Check. I guess here. Let's see, do I have mate like this? Let's try it out, right? Mm -hmm. Probably he'll take the rook. I don't think he wants to endure that. If only I could checkmate like Karen did today. But okay, I'll make another queen at least, right? <laughs> I'll at least make a second queen. Maybe this is better, but it's actually even winning this queen because you can't save your queen. Mm -hmm. I'll be up two queens for a rook and a bishop. Even one queen is better than a rook and a bishop. <laughs> Pretty funny stuff. See, I think rook h1 would have won there. But we can analyze this a bit, I guess, but looks like I'm going to take this and promote my queen. So <laughs> that looks like that's over. So yeah, he can't really take the bishop. But then he lost his piece, and he's just down material and getting mated. So you can't really play the position. If he wanted to block, I know what he means. Or g3. Instead of rook, instead of knight g3, right? You want rook g3. Oh yeah. 
that's definitely a reasonable suggestion. Um, let's see, I think I can find some tactical idea here, maybe? Like, I'm looking at check, trying to push the pawn. Right? You see what I mean there? Mm -hmm. Check, trying to push the pawn. Although you could block with the queen, which defends that square conveniently. No, then I have x clam. So it's check here, boom shakalaka. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yes. Now if you don't play queen f2, because you don't want to get styled on. Although, hold, hold on, hold on. I thought here we can do this, but there's the knight there. There's a, it was a premature oh, yeah, celebration. Right. Oh. <laughs> it was. But okay, I'm just going to roast you here. Look at this roast. <laughs> this is a roast now. Definitely. Yeah, come on. Oh, no, no, it's it's protected. It's still... I thought the queen was not protecting it anymore, but mm. the bishop's still protecting it. So hold on. We can we can win this, though. I, I can feel it. It's It's got to be a win here, right? Where are you from, Silver Wing? Check. I can't ever play Rook H2. Good buddy. I don't know. Maybe this doesn't win. That'd be crazy. This looks like I had all the tactics in the world, and they don't win. Mm-hmm. Maybe I could switch my move order up a bit. Like maybe I could try something like that. No, he just takes a bishop simply. Simply bishop takes. You keep forgetting about that bishop. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so come on. So maybe this doesn't win then. That looked pretty good though. It's kind of hard to believe. Yeah, maybe well, rook g3 take... is a better defense. Wait, but you couldn't take the bishop because the queen was over there. Yeah, but his queen was here defending it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the queen f2 is a good try. But maybe we could, uh, even playing this first doesn't work. Maybe we could try to take this first and then knight takes. But anyways, I won't have my rook tricks then. Dang. Well, I guess the engine can win, but I guess we'll have to resort to that because I can't find the win. It does, oh no, it just says it's like close to equal. Here, there's not a win here. That's why I couldn't find it. Yeah, rook h1, king h, king g2, rook g3, knight takes, is fine. This is a variation, it just goes here and does this. And it says black's better. Like, black has a, you know, about a half a pawn advantage. Mm -hmm. So dang, I can't, I couldn't beat it because it wasn't losing. So your rook g3 is a better defense than what Bulligan played. Knight g3 blunder. But I think he was probably afraid of some tricks like that, right? He's probably afraid of these tricks. They just don't work. Mm -hmm. Like I thought it was winning too. And again, they're certainly in time pressure. Very interesting position here. It's tough when like you don't have a lot of pawns. It gives your opponent a lot of tactical options because you don't have a lot of you know, shielding for your pieces mm -hmm. or footing for your pieces. So you have loose pieces and a loose king. But yeah, I would have defended. You know, knight, knight g3 lost him the game because then this is too strong. Yeah, I had... Yeah, that was a good question about the rook mm -hmm. to g3 because I was wondering that too. Hey, Fern Fam Six, how's it going? All right, what did you want to do? Another one, or it's it's a new section now. Um, let's see. Hey, seventy four seventy four. Let me see what time it is. Fifty eight. I wouldn't say the chair is off limits to others, you know. <laughs> But you know, it's his yeah, it's it's his designated chair. But sometimes I have to go on his computer to like send myself stuff that he's recorded. Yeah. So it's not like I don't sit in his chair then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Is it you off know? limits? Yeah, that's right. that's not exactly correct. He's if it, you've never seen All in the Family. I've uh, you know, no, I know of it. No. I might have seen a couple episodes. I don't know what made me think of that, I guess because of the chair thing. Archie was always yelling at everybody to get up out of his chair. <laughs> so we don't have that going on. But generally, we don't get in his chair. Archie's chair. We have our own chair. Yeah, Archie's yeah. chair. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we just keep going. All right, yeah. No keep reason on not going. to. We've got time. Keep rolling, rolling, ben, rolling, rolling. Ben what? is going to stream Fern Fam. Um, it's um, 5 o'clock Eastern time. So, yeah, you won't even have to wait too long between streams, huh? Yeah. Just a couple of auras. <laughs> All right, this will be 
people I don't know who they are, I guess. Yeah. I don't know those names. Yeah, I don't who know. are those people? They they those do look like they're they're strong though, right? <laughs> yeah. They look like strong chess player names. Kokarev, I guess. Mm -hmm. Kokarev against Nair. Nair. Na Nair. <clears throat> it seems like I've heard of Kokarev, but maybe I'm getting the name confused with another one. This section is going to be a piece for three pawns. What's kind of funny is this is the third section in the book. So it says on the book, three piece for three pawns. And so I thought it's three pieces for three pawns. Oh, I see. Does that make sense? <laughs> but no, this is just the third section, a piece for three a pawns. A piece for three pawns. Yes. All right. It is black to play. Hey, this is Spencer. We have, maybe we'll play some of the Inhuman that much. We're not sure about it. I have a deadline. I have to be somewhere today. But maybe we'll squeeze in a little playing. Nair. I wonder if it's like Nair, but they spelling with a Y instead of a J. Because I know who Nair is. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. Hey, Seeds Boy. All right. This is a theoretical position arising from a piece sacrificed in the Nidorf. White has three pawns for the piece, but they are not very far advanced. In general, three such pawns do not provide enough compensation for a piece in the middle game, unless there are other factors involved. In this case, black's king is exposed, and his f8 rook is out of play. And this tips the balance slightly in white's favor. <clears throat> not yet, Pimmy Draz. I will look at that, li that link, though. I'm looking forward to it. I've got to look at something Kangaroo sent me, too. I'm going to do that tonight when I catch up on all my emails. I'll let you know what I think about it. Rook c8, dubious. This is an inaccuracy because it commits the rook too soon. <clears throat> Queen c6 is the best move. Can you go back to that comment about committing? So... I think the point is that maybe his rook should go here. Or maybe even in another position, his rook could go here when it doesn't hang mate. Oh, I So see. he already picked a square for his rook mm -hmm. when he didn't have to. He might have other options later. Okay. Is I what see. he's trying to say. I see what you're saying. Or even maybe the rook is necessary here to protect the pawn. Like if I go take in this pawn later, mm -hmm. I don't want you taking that pawn. So committing the rook too early is robbing him of some flexibility there. Queen c6 is, I guess, the theoretically preferred move because it's actually still theory. Queen d2, queen c7, exclam. And then here's the point, actually, rook d8, as we discussed, oh, yeah. instead of rook c8, because now we got our queen there. <clears throat> this is the best defense for black. Although, uh, maybe white's still a little better there. Rook c8, quite dubious. Rook e3. Threatening to win at once with rook c3, because there's mate here deflecting mm -hmm. the rook. Black's reply is forced, queen c6, and queen c7. So he actually did the same thing, but now he, instead of being able to play rook d8, he played rook c8. So it's, it's, if he does play rook d8, it's a whole tempo slower. And anyways, he has this move now. And takes. He had to play queen e7 to guard this, or he has to guard these squares, right? So takes, takes. The exchange of rooks helps white, because black is left with an inactive rook on f8. And this rook is not inactive. That's active. Queen c3? It's hard to tell the c's from e's. And here, actually, both were playable, so I couldn't just decipher it. <clears throat> Queen b3, b7, rather. Rook d4, bishop d7, and b3. When you have three pawns for a piece, it's important not to create any weaknesses, which gives the side with the piece a target to attack. Unless the pawns are already far advanced, they should be advanced cautiously, making sure not to create unnecessary weaknesses. What are your thoughts on the So Abdisatarov match? Well, So is going to crush him, <clears> right? So. Yeah. yeah, we're sorry to miss it. I didn't. I would have preferred to stream later. It'll still be going on when we're done. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. It's a long match. Yeah, who's winning so far? I assume so. I assume so. <laughs> <laughs> Never play f6. 
But, you know, he's trying to get his rook, I guess, doing something. And also stopping the queen from infiltrating on the dark squares, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's actually playing king f7 to get the rook over on the queen side. I get it. I get it. e5. This is nice to block, keep the pawn on a white square. Keep this pawn on a white square, right? Blocking that bishop. Oh, yeah. Black's king is never mm -hmm. really safe. Here, white exploits the weak h pawn. F5 question mark. This allows white to play G G5, G4, G5, which greatly improves his chances in an endgame because he can make an outside pass pawn on the king side in the endgame. Karen's actually originally from Bama. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. This is Spencer. I'm from, um, from Alabama, southern Alabama. Lived in Atlanta a while, though. So better than f5 would have been fe. No, so the queen is here. Somehow I, I messed up the notation because it's queen takes h7 in this position. Oh, actually, it, I just skipped a move. It wasn't the it wasn't the fault of, you know. Of a setup. Yeah. Queen d3 was played here, threatening this. Mm -hmm. And then e5, threatening that. And that's okay, why that's why I was confused. Yeah, I was confused because you made a comment about the, the way pawn. Pawn's weak. Right, right, I thought he was just going to go here later. Yeah, yeah. Know? So I was waiting. I'm like, why am I going to attack that pawn? <laughs> right. So that's why he played f5 indeed to block the queen. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Might be. Might be. Mm. Um, instead, he should still play fe, allowing this even, where it, when it's super scary now. Mm-hmm. Rook f7. Check. Check. And takes here. No, well, some people say I have a southern accent, Lord Sebastian. A little. It's not very pronounced. <laughs> Queen takes g2. This is the best chance for defense, although white still has an advantage. But there are possibilities for black to get counterplay. Certainly, this queen is, is a little irritating. Yes. Wesley had a 3-0 mm -hmm. lead. Oh, he did? After 5-0. 5-1, I mean. Oh, Okay. I'm pretty normal fluorescent potato. Yeah. Oh, are you the one that sent the masks? I didn't see a name fluorescent. Um, fluorescent. Bishop takes. Um, oh yeah, there's a there was a name on the package. I oh what oh, it was. I didn't I see that. the name. I yeah. love the masks. Yeah, they're and cool. There was I, a, I took one. <laughs> yeah, there was a Definitely. scarf thing. I, I got that scarf. Oh, um, <laughs> stole it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. That was great. Yes. F five is what he played though? Question mark. G4 X clam. Like he was saying, he wants to get the past pawn because mm -hmm. he's got four against three. Yeah, that pawn was free real estate. It's a free house for you, Jim. King E8. If F takes G, Queen H7 check. Queen H4. King B2 X clam. With queen takes and rook d6 to come. Oh, mm. thanks, Market Sands, for 200 bits. Yay, Market Sands, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we loved that little package bishop takes. Definitely. Those were great. This gives white a decisive advantage. So he must allow the pawns on the king's side to advance further instead of taking it. King e8, g5. Black is lost. He still has no counterplay since white's king is safe and his pawns are all secure. The result is that black cannot do anything to stop white from improving his position. For example, by playing rook d6 and targeting the weak a pawn, which is what he did. <clears throat> queen d2. Defending f4 and offering a queen swap. If black declines, white e can easily make progress, for example, with king d2, a5, rook b6, continuing to improve the position. So he did take bishop c8 to protect the a pawn. And now he's trying to make a pass pawn here, and he's got a pass pawn there, and he can even make another pass pawn. Mm -hmm. h5, this prevents the further advance of the h pawn, but gives white a protected pass pawn. So he's just going to make pass pawns all over the place. Make you cry all over the place. 
Now white has a decisive liquidation, but the position was lost in any case. He took this check and then went back because this was attacked. And then black wins back the pawn, but it's too many passed pawns. It's four passed pawns. That's quite a lot of passed pawns. Mm -hmm. and resigns. And the only way to stop the queen is to go here, but then we'll go here, and you can't stop them both. Mm -hmm. Great technique at the end there, allowing the bishop up endgame, but we've got so many passed pawns, it was unstoppable. Mm -hmm. It's a good game by whoever this guy is, Kokorev. I mean, if he beat the, the Nair that I know, then dang, pretty tough. But maybe it's a different nayer. <laughs> yeah. Maybe more of a naysayer, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Well, what do you think? I mean, it's up to you. You're the one uh, with the schedule. Yeah, I'm, I'm cold. All right. That much I do know. <laughs> yeah, it was set really low to a nice temperature. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we could um, probably have, have to make a choice between doing another section and then just kind of end in there. Mm -hmm. Or I could play a couple of people, and you could analyze it, and then we could be done there. Well, there's one more uh, example with the piece for three pawns oh. in this section. Let's so finish that So maybe we should then. just finish this yeah, one section. Yeah, I agree with that, because it makes more sense, yeah. Um, you don't like that he traded off the queens in the attack? That black did, you mean? Because, uh, I mean, that wasn't necessarily forced. You mean here. But again, uh, if you know, if you don't, you might lose your A-pawn. And like Nun said, we can improve the position. We can continue to keep improving the position. And Black still has the same fundamental issue that he has zero counterplay. He can't attack anything. So we can just improve <clears throat> and improve our position at infinitum until it's winning by force, really. We can just keep pushing the pawns, make a pass pawn here, make more another pass pawn there. And slowly build. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe but it's not the best practical chance to that's trade. That's what things. I was wondering. So you don't think he had to trade? He didn't have to trade? Like, no, no, but to... not necessarily. But I mean, yeah. he's going to lose his pawn. So he traded to not lose his pawn. So he played bishop c8. Mm -hmm. If you don't trade, you're going to lose your pawn. You know, even if you play, like, for example, check king b1, your pawn's hanging and you can't defend it. You can't go bishop c8 because I'm going to play rook d8 check. And win your bishop and mate you at the same time. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Yeah, so you can't really uh, mm -hmm. you can't save your pawn without trading queens. Is is kind of the problem. Queen a three mate. Wow. <laughs> well, it's check, but it's not mate, and you still have the same problem. I take it. And then I'll have three connected pass pawns. So you're gonna lose no matter what. Also, if I take here, I'm gonna go there. So you can't really defend Black's position. You know, you can't really defend Black's position. In the long term. In fact, what he did probably survives the longest, right? He didn't lose immediately. You know, he lost in 15, 20 more moves. So he did the best he could. But all right, let's look at the next example, huh? Mm -hmm, definitely. <clears throat> What's going on here? Okay. Didn't, didn't let me pick up the king for a second. It's going to be tough to set up a position without the king. Mm -hmm. None of these names are tough. Demjanovic. And Nevjednici. Okay. Yeah. No, I know both of these oh, guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, How do you yeah. say the first name? Damjanovic. Oh, da Damjanovic? Yeah, Damjanovic and Nevjednici. All right, let's see. This looks right. Three pawns for a piece still. Black to play. I'll add those crazy names, too. That's how you know they're tough. Very strong GM from Serbia. Yeah, Damjanovic. Mm-hmm. 
Although um, all, they're both very strong, and I don't know where Naviad Nietzsche is from, so maybe he is also Serbian, <laughs> mm -hmm. for all I know. Is that right? Naviad Nietzsche. Okay, there we go. All right. So whose turn? Black to play. Black to play. Yes. Another position resulting... Uh, Another position resulting from a Sicilian peace sacrifice, but this is more favorable for Black than the previous example. The first point is that the queens have been exchanged, so Black has little to fear regarding his king. Secondly, Black's king side pawn structure is intact. In the other example, he didn't have a G pawn. Uh, while White must watch out as his E4 pawn is slightly weak. White would prefer his pawn to be on F3. Which which would solidify his center and give black fewer possibilities for counterplay. So yeah, that was a big point in the other example. All the guy's pawns were so solid, the extra piece couldn't attack anything. Mm -hmm. But here, at least, if this was here, that might be the case, but it's not. So his white squares are a little bit weaker here because okay. he had he already played out four as part of the opening. you know. Nevertheless, the power of the three connected queenside pawns should not be underestimated even if they are all currently on the second rank and the position is roughly level. So let's see, so people are suggesting castles. Castles might be risky because of this move because you got some loose stuff, although perhaps you can go here. Even still, your pieces are kind of loose after I move my bishop away. Like bishop c5, setting up more threats against your rook. Knight g4, that's an interesting move. I probably would play bishop c5 still. He played knight e7. That's what the real move was? Yes. Okay, I was looking at knight g4 too. Black intends to target the e pawn with bishop c6. And if the pawn ever advances, then he can get his knights into d5. Or even this knight to f5, actually. So rook h d1, bishop c6. Bishop b6, the little threat. I hope black doesn't castle, because I won't be able to castle. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Dang. <laughs> In fact, he says castles is impossible due to bishop d8. You can't? I thought you could override. The I, yeah, but then I can't go back after that, obviously. I can't go back in the position if I override it. Oh, I see. Oh, Because so it sets like a up new a one. new position. Yeah. Right? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a hassle. Yes. Yes, it's it's a castle and avoid a hassle, but I can't <laughs> castle, so it's a hassle. Crazy <laughs> how it worked out. So he played knight d7. G5, what is, are you kangaroo over there with that? <laughs> G5, dang. I remember because he played that against mm -hmm. you. I was wondering if you remembered. I <laughs> Bishop f2. Rook c8. I was happy about it. I bet. <laughs> White's pieces are actively placed, and there's no obvious way to improve their position. So it's time to start pushing them pawns. A4. <laughs> yes, yes. You heard your name. His ears are burning. We're you talking about G5. Bishop H4. Dubious. The point of this move is that it indirectly defends the e-pawn. If you take here, we'll do this. Mm. Okay. I mean, we'll just take the knight, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if, if I take here and you try this trick, I can actually take your bishop then. Or even just take this with check. No, no, then rook takes, right, right. So you just take here. Yeah, you just take here. Because otherwise, rook takes knight would have worked in both variations. So bishop h4 gets out of the way of that. Um, and if bishop takes e4, we can take this to win the piece this way. So that's the other point of bishop h4. You can't take the pawn on e4 either way because of tactics. Uh, however, it gives black the perfect opportunity to solve his main problem, the inactive rook on h8. Um, the better way to play instead of this is to play more simply, actually, with rook 6 d4. This maintains the balance. The problem is after bishop h4, rook g8 x-clam. 
he's going to play g5 with the tempo because you played bishop h4. And this will activate his rook in on the king side. So he didn't want to see g5, so he actually took... All right, g5, who would play that? All right, Nevedici, at least he, you know, prepares it and didn't castle. <laughs> so it's a little safer. Yes. So he took, but this also will activate the rook, right? By playing g takes. Rather than see his kingside pawns broken up by g5, white exchanges his bishop. But this opens a file for the enemy rook. <laughs> CNN is calling Trump the, a White House occupant. Okay. I mean, that is true, you know. That's funny. I mean, he's he's still president. Come on. Absolutely. Yeah. It's for a little while. That's a little cold. Right. White House yeah. occupant. <laughs> I didn't think CNN was against him. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than president. Yeah, that's rude. More of a golf course occupant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. I don't, I don't, it's funny to hear it though. It's funny to hear it. I watch CNN, but I do not condone such pettiness. Yeah, come on. They, they should be, a, you know, taking the high road. He's the president for, you know, better or worse. Mostly, well, <laughs> E5. By undermining the E4 pawn, black gives squares in the center for his pieces. Yeah, look at his pieces have all these squares. Uh, Knight D5. Knight takes d5 dubious. This makes things easier for black. Now his bishop reaches e4, uh, which will mm. which will uh, tie white down to the defense of the c2 pawn. When he can bring the g8 rook into play with h5, h4 as well. Knight b5 is the best chance for white here. Taking is not correct. <laughs> yeah, that is funny, MG weirdo. <laughs> Unemployed man with three baby mamas soon to be evicted from public housing. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Yeah. B3, bishop e4. And this is what he was saying. Because of the knight exchange, bishop on e4 is very strong. I mean, would you say that's worth the, worse than a rook? Like, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. it hits this, and it's also helping defend against the past bonds if they advance true great piece right in the center of the board rook 60 or rook 62 i thought he'd use the other rook but what do i know hey indo queen oh, how's Indo's it going in here? nice i know that i need to get with you about our sub battles mm -hmm. i'm sorry i didn't get with you but i am interested when people say Biden's not my president. If you don't like it, get out. Right. Yes. <laughs> rook G1. If GH, Rook G4, I wouldn't really trust this much for white, huh? Rook H3, Rook HC3 to target C2 mm. is good for black. Sort of implies it's not winning, but obviously you'd rather have black there. So Rook G1 to stop the Rook infiltration. Oh, you had an ad. You couldn't hear. You didn't hear us. I was saying that I, <laughs> I um, want to do our sub battles. I'm sorry I didn't get back with you, but I am interested, so let's do it soon. Then we were talking a little bit about our president and president elect. Now that White's rooks are not doubled on the D file, Black can clear the back rank and bring his G8 rook into play. Otherwise, it would have been rook D7 check, but he undoubled it, so. Now there's oh, no rook yeah. d7 check. c4. You think this looks like nonsense for white? Yeah, I mean, white's very passive. But if his pawns get going, then it won't be so nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he's trying to do. King c3 question mark. This loses straight away as black can secure a past h pawn. Though white is on the defensive, he still has drawing chances with the best defense. GH. For example, rook d2 check. That's why you'd be not wanting to play GH, right? And instead he played king c3 to try to stop rook d2 check. Rook d2 check, king c3 check, king b4, rook f3. Trying to get that pawn. See, if you collect this pawn, then we can have a pass pawn immediately. Mm -hmm. oh, so that's yeah. an important pawn to capture. He, this line is pretty long. It's just a for example, you know, for instance.
The moves are pretty logical. It don't seem like they're the only moves, right? But they are pretty logical, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I think we can understand them. And now it's a clear draw. Indeed. So, I mean, this is the only move, but then we'll go here. Then even if you... I'll just let you take that pawn, right? Yeah. For example. I mean, I could even go back, I guess. But I'll just let you take the pawn. Even this is a draw, right? Isn't this the Ferugia draw? But, oh, no, no. It, the king... I, my king is out of play. Yeah. My king is too far out of play. I need to go here. Dang it, I was trying to get the Ferugia draw, but I couldn't do it. So I guess I would have to go here then, right? Mm-hmm. Well, here I can avoid the king and pawn in game, actually. Or I could still just keep doing it, yeah. Why would I do that? I'll just keep doing it. Because you can't uh, protect this and attack this at the same time. So you're either going to let me take this or you're going to stop attacking this. In which case, I'll go here and take it. So you can't actually do both with <clears> black. <throat> yeah. Okay, but anyways, we don't need to analyze this endgame too much. What is this, Silman? Yeah. <laughs> Instead of playing gh and allowing rook d2, which is probably a draw, he played king c3. This will lose, actually, as it turns out. Check. h3 x clam. This is going to win him the game now. We're going to collect the pawn. And you can't even stop me with rook h1, because my oh, yeah. bishop is too good. I told you that bishop was good. Mm-hmm. He's a good bishop. Yeah, give it head pats, because it's so good. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, usually my, when I'm black, usually that bishop's just crap. Yeah, well, because you play the French, right? Yeah. I missed another move. I don't know why I'm doing that so much. Let me use my fingy to help, right? Mm -hmm. We'll get it going on the iPad next time, and then it'll be easier because you have it like, right in front of the thing. Actually, this is right. Yeah, this was right. No, that, that was right. I lost my place and got confused. But I actually was a little bit confused about one move that I wanted to look at. Yeah, so I actually didn't miss a move there. Right. <laughs> Ferusha, come on. Why did you have to play king b5? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter, but I, I wouldn't play king b5, right? I'd just play a7, a8 like he did. So you play king b5 and then a7. Yeah, that is weird unless they're trying to prevent bishop c6 for some reason. Right. I don't know why. Right. Yeah, why would you? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess it didn't matter. But still, it was weird to me. But yeah, you can't stop the h pawn now. So that's GG. So yeah, very interesting game there by two players with great names. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to compare this to what we looked at earlier. Um, like he was saying, the queens off the board is very helpful because Black's king is not feeling under pressure, even though he never castled. And his king was actually pretty good in the center. And he did get his rook act. That's, that's the problem with his king position. His rook on h8 is poorly placed. But he did get it active with Kangaroo's favorite pawn break, g5. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, White's rooks, uh, yeah, they weren't particularly active. But really, it's it's the problem for white was his pawns, right? His pawns didn't really get going. And so he didn't get to... Uh, yeah, I mean, and he also didn't have that perfect position like before where the guy had no counterplay. Mm -hmm. And if he had niche, he had plenty of counterplay <clears throat> along this diagonal. That's why 97 bishop c6 was so good as an idea. Great plan. And you guys wanted to, like, castle and go here. Ridiculous. <laughs> and if he had niche, he's like, no, I understand the position so deeply. This has to be the right idea. And he's right. Again, it's because this pawn is here. If the pawn is on f3, Nivianichi would have to play very differently, the position. Why would you play bishop c6 then? But all right, that's it for the three pawns for a piece section. Mm -hmm. Next time we'll look at queen versus rook and minor piece. Okay. Yeah, I like, I'm getting into this book format now. Mm -hmm. Now that we've gone a little bit further. So maybe we'll continue with this. So it might even be that we could still do the Penchenko interspersed here and there if there's like a particular topic that kind of goes along with what we're doing with the nun even. 
All right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll have to, uh, that'll take some research on my part. Though. Oh, no, don't worry about that. I just meant, like, because they have pretty clear titles. Mm-hmm. And there's, if there was one that was similar. But, no, I don't mean I want to spend any time on it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and end today. Normally, I would, let's see, this is an hour and 30 minutes. I have to be somewhere today, so that's the reason we're doing a shorter stream and an earlier stream. Ben will be streaming in three hours, so check back in three hours, uh, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, unless that's changed for some reason, which I have not seen that it's changed. So let's see who's streaming. Um, Still got the... Oh, I feel like most people are just going to watch that. I think so, too. <laughs> you know, no matter where we send them, they're going to go see Wesley, right? Oh, the men look, <laughs> they've got a lot there. Like, For some on? ridiculous nonsense. <laughs> no, no, that's actually not ridiculous. Really... Oh, they're it's actually... probably both. Is They're probably battling each other, right? Well, I mean, they're not. They they actually have all... Okay, I know who we're going to raid. Okay. <laughs> but um, i got to raid the chest bras. I'll go ahead and tell you. It won't be a surprise. Take it easy, the suspenser. Thank you. Love chess bras. Yes, we'll spin in my dad's chair. That's that's the plan. <laughs> we'll take turns. Can I go first? All right. See you guys. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Take it easy. See you Have next time. Have a great rest of your see weekend. See you Tuesday. Bye.